Hi everyone and welcome back to the channel. Uh, today I'm going to compare two budget super telezooms for the microphoto system. I'm comparing them on an Olympus body, uh, as I don't have any Panasonic bodies. Uh, one is the Olympus 75300 and the other one is the Panasonic Lumix 100300. So let's see how they compare and which one I will choose in the end. So when I was looking for a comparison between these two lenses, I just couldn't find any like direct real world comparison. Might be me, didn't look deep enough. But when it comes to lock tests, then the Zui Core seems to be a little sharper and better chromatic aberrations than the Lumix. But again, that's why I took both of them outside and, and compare them that way. Because the lock test will not really show you what the lens can to in a real world situation. So I went out uh, with both of them on the EM1 Mark II, the body I'm using, and compared how they cope with on this body. If you have a Lumix body, that will be a bit different because the Lumix is a power IS and that communicates with the Lumix body, it's not with the Olympus. So you have dual image stabilization. Unfortunately, you don't have that on the Olympus. So for me, that's not a tipping point for a Lumix user it might be. So I made a conclusion I keep one and the other one has to go. Uh, stay tuned till the end to see which one it is. I don't want to reveal it now because that might influence you in one way or another which I don't want. I want you to see how they compare and explain why my reasonings behind the decision and you might come to a different conclusion than I do. So make sure you stay tuned and see both lenses, uh, how they compare. So I'm not going to bore you with the data sheets. If you want to compare them, I'll put it up on the screen so you can just pause the video and see how they compare. So there you go. Uh, the key difference is that the Zuiko is a slightly smaller and slightly lighter and has a smaller diameter, but in return, the Lumix being a little bit bigger and heavier, it has image stabilization built in and it has a better ceiling as well. The Zuiko goes 75 mm uh, with, on the wide end and on 300 mm the Lumix seemed to be a little narrower. Very slight difference but uh, there is, uh, the Zuiko is just a little wider on the 300 end. So here we go. And uh, one interesting thing about the two lenses, that as you can see, both of them have lens hood. As far as I know, the Lumix comes with the lens hood, with the Zuiko it's an optional extra. And uh, what I found interesting that even though that the Zuiko goes wider on the short end than the Lumix, it has the deeper, longer lens hood, which is quite strange because you would expect it to be the other way around. So as you can see, there's not much difference between the two lenses, especially if you're using it on a Olympus body, so you're not uh, having the advantage of the Lumix bodies with the dual IS. So that's one thing that's common between these two lenses, uh, that none of them are accepting a teleconverter. So if you need a little longer reach, then you have to go for the 100-400s, and if it's still not enough, and you need to use teleconverters, then you have to go for the Olympus 100-400, which can accept teleconverters. Unfortunately, in the Panasonic Leica 100-400, uh, with a little hack it will, but I wouldn't do that if I were you. So I got both lenses from MPB and uh, the, I paid less for the Olympus because it's a cheaper lens. So if budget is an option for you, then Olympus has a better budget offer. Even with the lens would I paid like a hundred pound less than I paid for the Lumix one. So again, if that's a deciding factor for you, then the Olympus wins. So there's one thing, as you know, I shoot Sony as well, and the zoom ring on the Olympus turns the other way around as uh, my Samyang zoom lenses. The Lumix turns the same way. So if you're mixing systems, Sony and, and uh, microphotos, then the Lumix will go the same way. The Olympus will go the other way. You just have to get used to it. I didn't find it uh, to be a deciding factor here. 
you might, I, as I said, your mileage might vary from mine. So as I said, I wanted to compare them in a real world situation, in real world use. So I'm using them for a while now and uh, I just went out to check how the half stop advantage of the Lumix will show up in the picture, how the image stabilization compares, or how, is it easier to carry around a smaller, lighter lens? Is the 75 millimeter on the short end makes a difference? So let's go out uh, to our local park in Whitby Park and see how they compare. So as you can see, these two lenses, when it comes to specifications, they very, very close, very, very similar. But there are some subtle differences when it comes to shooting with them. And this is why we're here today on this beautiful spring Saturday in our local park, where we have the local park birds, uh, so like pigeons, crows, or even some songbirds like the robin, and my favorite, the tits. So when it comes to image quality, I have tested both lenses, both outdoors for a few days and both indoors on my test board. And what I found that when it comes to image quality, up to like 200, 250 mils, they are literally indistinguishable. I couldn't tell what's the difference unless there was the exit telling me which lens is which. The difference at 300 millimeter is much smaller than I expected because I've seen many, many tests showing that the Panasonic lags behind. But honestly, on outdoor shots, I didn't see any sharpness issues with the Panasonic, so it was really good. All the shots from the Zuiko and the Lumix were really, really nice, called a quite good detail, and was very, very usable. On the test chart, though, there was a slight difference. The Olympus was a little sharper in some cases, especially when I stopped down to F8 then it was uh, remarkably sharper than the Panasonic. So one part where the Zuiko gets ahead of the Lumix and that's chromatic aberrations. The Zuiko handles it very, very nicely. I can barely see any, a little bit of cyan sometimes, but it's really well handled. The Lumix handles quite okay, but in some situations there's a lot of purple fringing, which can be removed in post-process, but that's an extra step and that sometimes just uh, affects the image quality so the zoico is the one to go if you're shooting a lot uh, with bright background high contrast scenes because the lumix will give you a bit of purple fringing So there is one part where the Lumix gets ahead and that's image stabilization. The Zuiko doesn't have one, so you are relying on the IBIS. And the longer the focal length, the IBIS gets less and less effective because it will need to move more and more to compensate for the same amount of shake. But the Lumix has a built-in IS and this is one, the Mark II which has power IS that communicates with the body if you're using the Panasonic body. Unfortunately, not on the Olympus bodies, so that's a disadvantage if you're using uh, Olympus that you can't have the dual IS. But it was a good opportunity for me to compare the in-body IS and the power IS. So simply, I just turn off the power IS and then it's using the IBIS in the camera. If I turn it on, then it's using the power IS. And what I found that for photography, I had a, a, a very small difference towards the power IS. The big difference came when I was shooting movies. The power IS was just much more smooth, uh, much more easier to, to make like a nice smooth footage. The IBIS was a little jumpy as I expected because of the long focal length. When it, it's reaching the end where it, how far it can go, it jumps back and then starts again. So you can feel that when you're shooting movies. When you're shooting still images, I got a little bit more keepers when the power IS was on compared to the IBIS. So if you need good handheld image stabilization, then it's the Lumix. But again, if you're shooting birds, especially flying birds, then you will use fast shutter speed. So 
the image stabilization is not that important. So it's up to your use case scenario, which one is more important for you. If you're using lots of static things like wildlife or birds and trees, then the power eyes will give you a slight advantage for your composition and you can go a bit lower on shutter speeds or you can just use a different uh, lower ISO so you will get less noisy image. So that's a win for the Lumix. So when it comes to autofocus, the two lenses are, are performing very, very similarly. Uh, they're very snappy when it comes to single autofocus and they, they're following quite well on continuous tracking. Well, it's an EM1 Mark II, so uh, that's not exactly the camera strength, but it was quite usable with both lenses. So when it comes to autofocus, I didn't really notice any differences. But in situations like this, when you have lots of branches, autofocus have hard time to pick up the bird, let's say, among those strength, uh, little branches. So you need to use manual focus, and that's where the Zuiko clearly wins, because the Panasonic is just very stiff. It's, it's a bit harder to turn, probably it's because of the weather ceiling. But when I find it when I'm turning it, it's just so hard to turn that I, I shake the camera so much that I find it really hard to focus precisely on my subject. With the Zuiko, I can just hold the lens stable and just use one finger to simply turn the ring, which can be a disadvantage as well because I had it very occasionally that I accidentally turned the focusing ring and, and just knocked it out of focus. So. When it comes to autofocus, they're on pair, but when it comes to manual focus, just because of the stiff ring, Zuiko clear winner. So when it comes to bokeh, the two lenses perform very, very similarly. Uh, maybe the Panasonic, because of the wider aperture, has a bit more smoother bokeh, but to be honest, because they both are small aperture lenses, don't expect something like a very obliterated background, but you can still get a very nice separation, especially if you can get closer to the birds or, or your subject, then you will have a very nice smooth background with both lenses. So, if I don't see the exit, to be honest, I couldn't tell the two pictures apart. So I would say that this is a draw here. So I just found that uh, a pair of tits are having a nest up there. So I'm just waiting for them to go in and out and trying to capture them with Pro Capture L. So I still have autofocus and that's where one of the differences between the Zuiko and the Lumix. With the Lumix I only have the Pro Capture H. So I have higher FPS but I'm losing the autofocus. With the Zuiko I can choose between the Pro Capture H or Pro Capture L where I have a lower, still good 18 FPS with this camera but I have autofocus so I can make sure that the bird is in focus and I can just get the right moment. That's one of the features I just love in the Olympus. So if you're shooting a lot Pro Capture and you're using the autofocus, then you have to go to the Zuiko because the Lumix can't do the autofocus with Pro Capture, just the high speed Pro Capture. So that's a win for the Zuiko. To show you the close focusing abilities of the two lenses, I'm using my little macro setup. And when it comes to close focusing, none of them are good at it on their own. But if you attach a Rhinox DCR 250 to both of them, then you can get really, really nice, cool, close macro shots. So I'm going to show you that, and then I will show you just how, uh, like a close up capabilities of the lens on its own. All right, so let me set this one up. So I haven't found anything interesting for macro. I only found this little moss kind of thing here on the tree. So I'm going to shoot that. Uh, to attach the Rhinox, I'm using a step down ring. This one is a 
67-43 and I have won 58-43 step down for the Zuiko. So first I'm going to shoot with the Panasonic and then with the Zuiko. So that was the moment when my battery died and I forgot my spare batteries home. We all been done doing that, don't we? So I came home and as this little fella here from I think my Hero Academy, don't quote me on this, it's my wife's stuff. And just to give you an idea how big this is, uh, you will see on the photos, uh, the distance between its eyeballs, the, the green part is two millimeters. So you will see that what magnifications we can get using the Rhinox on both lenses. So here's the result from the Panasonic at 100 millimeter and here's the result from the Olympus at 75 millimeter. So as you can see uh, due to the uh, shorter focal length the Olympus gives you a bit less magnification which I think it's a good thing because uh, you're fixed with the Rhinox on how far your subject can be so you, you have little room to move so it's good to have a bit more room for magnification change with the zoom but as you can see they have very similar results sharpness wise they're not going to be as good as let's say the 60 millimeter macro or even the 90 millimeter pro macro so it's not going to be the quality of a true macro lens but it will give you quite decent quality that will sharpening you know let's say top sharpen ai you can get like very good results so if, if you just want a macro lens on the go both of them can help you out so now let's see what these lenses are capable at 300 millimeter when it comes to the rhinox and as, just keep in mind that you're very very limited in your focus distance and i found it really really hard to aim at anything <laughs> so uh, that's a real challenge so this is the lumix image as you can see it's a bit soft as i say diffraction most likely kicked in already and here's the zuiko image about the same quality so again a bit soft but you don't need to go all the way into 300 millimeter. Uh, you can just zoom any, anywhere between 70 and to 300. So just to show you on the Zuiko again, this is minimum magnification and this is the maximum magnification. So as you can see, the results are as slightly soft at the 300 millimeter and obviously you won't get the same results at this magnification as you would get from a proper macro lens. If you want to go into extreme macro, I would highly recommend getting one of these lenses. This is the 25mm low white, it's capable of 2.5 to 5 times magnification uh, of life size. So that means that anything is uh, like 1 centimeter in real life, maybe 2.5 centimeter to 5 centimeter on the sensor. So this is a really good lens, uh, very hard to use, so uh, you, you will have a lot of challenges using this magnification even with these lenses just to find your subject just to aim at it it's, it's a nightmare so let's jump to the conclusion shall we so i made my decision one of them stays and the other has to go you probably guessed which one stays and which one has to go but i don't want to influence your decision because obviously your mileage will vary from mine so as i said i'm using them on an em1 mark ii and i'm starting with the olympus simply because it's the same brand so the olympus as i said it goes from 75 millimeter not 100 so you get a little extra opening on the wide end which is uh, quite handy it's slightly smaller sm slightly lighter I wouldn't say that's a big difference uh, they both plastic fantastic so they are both very light and, and fairly small when it comes to the zoom ring there's one advantage for my personal choice uh, is uh, the Zoico has just a bit better texture I like this so that it's carved in to the body opposed to the rubberized ring on the Lumix but for example my wife prefers the Lumix instead of the Zoico so you can see that that's why your personal choices matter don't just go blindly after what I choose but when it comes to the direction of the zoom ring I prefer the Lumix so that's a disadvantage for me on the Zoico when it comes to image quality in a real world use I couldn't tell 
honestly, I have to pixel peep to be able to guess that, yeah, it might be the Zoico, it might be the Lumix. The one dead giveaway here is the chromatic aberrations, uh, which Zoico just handles much better. You can see that on the unprocessed raw images. But once you start processing and do the post-process uh, fringe and chromatic aberration removal, then again, you get very, very similar results. So image quality wise, slight advantage at uh, the Zuiko, but in the end, both of them are, are quite good. Not great, but quite good. So there's one big advantage for the Olympus when you put it on an Olympus body, uh, that you will be able to use Pro Capture L, which means you will still have autofocus and auto exposure while it's buffering compared to the Pro Capture H, where you get higher frame rate, but you lose the autofocus and the auto exposure as soon you start buffering. So now let's see the advantages of the Lumix compared to the Zuiko. First of all, it has built-in image stabilization, optical image stabilization, which on the long end, it can be a little better than the IBIS, especially if you're using it on a Panasonic body, then it's a huge advantage that it can communicate with some selected Panasonic bodies. So you have dual IS, which is just the best on the market. Another advantage, weather sealing, UK weather, yeah. It's a big advantage for the Lumix. And the third one is half a stuff faster on both the long and the wide end. So that's, again, you can use a slightly lower ISO, you can use a slightly higher shutter speed. It's not as huge as it sounds, but it's, it's noticeable in some circumstances. So those are the key strengths for the Lumix. And uh, to be honest, when I was out and, and shooting in real world situations, I found the Lumix to balance a little better on my Olympus body. So I, I found the handling slightly better, except the mono focus ring that just too stiff, way too stiff. I think it's because of the better ceiling, but that on the Zuiko just better. Maybe it's because of the zoom ring turns the way I'm used to. So all these kind of small things, the handling wise, the Lumix was just for me more pleasant to use. But don't get me wrong, I enjoyed using the Zuiko just as much, just a little bit better on the Lumix. And I know I mentioned the Pro Capture L on the Zuiko, which the Lumix can't do, but it's only a software limitation in my opinion, because you can still use the continuous shooting L where you have autofocus and metering while you have 18 FPS. So why not just allow the Pro Capture L, which does the same thing, just instead of writing the card, it buffers. So I kind of feel like that Olympus just being cheeky here and, and just software limiting this feature from the <laughs> Lumix lenses, which is bad practice, let's be honest. So let's see in the end which, what was my choice, which shouldn't be uh, your choice as well, because as I said, your mileage is worried and you will see that what <laughs> tipped the scale for me, and that's the manual focus ring. The Olympus just has a much better manual focusing ring, and since I'm using manual focusing quite a lot uh, when, for example, birds in the branches, and, and the autofocus just can't pick up the bird <laughs> exactly because there are so many distracting elements, I use the manual focus quite a lot, and that just tipped the scale for me towards the Olympus. And yes, these lenses are so similar. That, that for me that was the main tipping factor. The Zuiko is slightly cheaper, that again if you're budget conscious could be the tipping point for you and uh, the Zuiko can do the Pro Capture L but the uh, Lumix can do the Continuous L. So I wouldn't say that's a huge advantage but it's good to have. So that's my choice but what should be yours? Well again I can't choose for you but I can give you my opinion. Uh, choose the Lumix if weather sealing is important to you, like here in UK, uh, or if you want to enjoy dual IS with a Panasonic body and a Panasonic lens, uh, it's just superior to IBIS only. And if you want to enjoy the advantage of that half stop, so a little lower ISO or a little faster shutter speed, those are the key advantages for the Lumix. Uh, or choose the Zuiko 
if you are on Olympus body and you want to enjoy the Pro Capture L, then that's the only option. Or if you need a little wider on the short, then, or if like me, you're using lots of manual focus, then I would say the Zuiko is better. And uh, if you want to work a little less on the photos in post process, then because the Zuiko handles chromatic aberrations better, it will be uh, an easier workflow. But again, you go any of these lenses, you will get a good lens uh, with good image quality, not great, just good. So you have to understand that these are budget options, so don't expect uh, world-class performance from it. But when it comes to image quality and shooting experience, I would say they're very much on par. So if you go with any of the lenses, if you have a better deal on the Lumix, then go for it. If you have a better gear deal and you're a Panasonic user on the Olympus, just go for it. You will probably get the same results from, from both lenses. But thanks for watching and leave us a comment below which one would you choose, the Zuiko or the Lumix. And if you like this video, please hit that like button and press the subscribe as well so you can see when we release more videos like this.